uh, Clear Lake City Hall Council Chambers, Olympic Drive in Clear Lake, December 15th at 6 p.m. We have the roll call, please. Commissioner Sluton? Present. Commissioner Perkins? Present. Vice Chair Hutchinson? Present. And Chair Webb? Present. And Commissioner Hansis is absent.
Uh, you're still allowed under the new law to regulate cultivation in any way the city sees fits that community needs. You can ban it completely or you can regulate it in the ways that have been regulated, uh, recommended tonight. Um, there are many options still available to the city, so that's the, the, the key part of that new law that I think you should keep in mind. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions about those. I'm really familiar with those bills. So the MAMERSA is clear in giving the city authority to regulate or ban medical marijuana cultivation, as well as to require a permit or license and a charge of fee. Based on the referendum of the cultivation ban was approved earlier this year, there is a sizable portion of the citizenry that would like to continue to cultivate marijuana, uh, medical marijuana, and we're aware of that. The ad hoc committee recognized that and is therefore not recommending a ban, but is recommending a much stricter ordinance that could be more easily enforced. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the existing ordinance is and then what the proposed ordinance says. The existing cultivation ordinance currently prohibits cultivation on vacant lots, outdoor cultivation within 600 feet of a public or private school or a child care center, outdoor cultivation within a mobile home park unless within a designated garden area or at least lot that exceeds 4,500 square feet, cultivation within any property with multifamily dwellings, and processing of medical marijuana. It also prohibits outdoor cultivation of more than six plants with a residence on less than half an acre, and then on up to, if you have 40 acres or more, you could, under the existing ordinance, have up to 48 plants. So the recommended cultivation ordinance that was put forward by the ad hoc committee prohibits Cultivation on vacant lots, same as the previous. Any indoor cultivation within a residential dwelling unit, unless allowed by the dispensary ordinance. So just to be clear, there is a separate ordinance that um, oversees dispensaries within the city. It's separate from cultivation. It prohibits cultivation within 600 feet of a public or private school, a child care center, or a public park. Uh, the first three on there were already in the ordinance. The public park was added. Cultivation within a property with multifamily dwellings, same as before. Uh, outdoor cultivation within a mobile home park. The ad hoc committee deleted a little bit of the verbiage there where it said within a designated garden area or at least lot that exceeded 4,500 square feet. They decided uh, to recommend just prohibiting it within a mobile home park. It would also prohibit um, cultivation area in excess of 100 square feet, cultivation without a city approved permit, processing of medical marijuana that in any way alters the chemical structure, uh, prohibited plants from being visible from any public right away, or processing marijuana in excess of that cultivated at said property. It also prohibits or would prohibit diversion of water from any waterway, Cultivation within 100 feet of specified drainage areas, including Clear Lake, Burns Valley Creek, Miller Creek, Alveda Creek, Molesworth Creek, and Cash Creek. If you remember earlier in the presentation, uh, talked about how the MRSA was concerned about uh, environmental protection, and this is one of the ways we're trying to incorporate that. It would also prohibit cultivation within any commercial zone, NUR zone, scenic corridor zone, or beautification zone. We have maps on the wall here that identify what those zones are, and you can, uh, planning commissioners each have a map as well. It would prohibit cultivation in excess of six plants, no matter what the size lot. Under the current ordinance, you, if you have 40 acres or more, you could have uh, up to 48 plants. So this would limit it to six plants, no matter what. Uh, and it also prohibits any type of commercial cultivation. So now we're moving from what's prohibited to what's required. The recommended ordinance would require registration of all growth sites by May 1st of each year, and the registration would be valid from May 1st to April 30th. So basically it'd be a one year permit. Permission to, uh, it would also require permission to enter, an, uh, uh, to enter and inspect growth sites up to two times a year in addition to the initial inspection. Um, it would require a property owner approval to grow, so if you're a lessee, you'd have to have um, 
permission from the property owner. One of the things that didn't get, uh, it was actually deleted from the draft ordinance is that the ad hoc committee did ask for a copy of the current recommendation uh, for medical marijuana uh, to be a part of the permitting requirement. The recommendation must be issued to the legal tenant of the property. It would require proof of residence so that if you're growing at a location, you need to be living there. That you have a permanent water source to the home, either through metered or well. One of the issues that we were finding under the current ordinance is that there were uh, grows that were happening with people importing water through water trucks and things. Uh, that the grow site be enclosed within a single square fenced area, no larger than 10 by 10, and with dimensions equal on all four sides, or accessory fully enclosed structure with the same dimensions. So you could have an enclosed outdoor structure, but it could not be any larger than 10 by 10. Uh, that the grow site would be secured by a lock at all times. It would also require a six foot solid fence for the fence ordinance and in compliance with the Clear Lake Municipal Code. A permanent legal residential structure on the parcel, so there has to be a home on the parcel that's being grown on. Uh, setbacks of five feet from the home and 10 feet from the property lines. And it would require $150 per year registration fee to help cover the cost of inspections and administration of the program. Penalties. Uh, if you fail to register, then abatement of the plants would be required. Um, there would be additional fines per plant for failure to abate. Failure to abate and or register results in a one-year suspension to the individual and the property. If, uh, a second violation would result in a permanent growing ban in the city for the individual and the property. A $300 fine for failure to register before May 1st in addition to other abatement fines. And then another very major significant change is the existing medical marijuana cultivation ordinance is a part of chapter five, which is the police regulations. Uh, this new ordinance would be a part of chapter uh, 18, which is the land use zoning ordinance. And that's why it's coming before you, the planning commission, because it's a land use issue. Some financial or policy implications, the recommended ordinance would require individuals who want to cultivate, it says here, to apply for a permit issued by the Chief of Police. Upon fur further discussion with our police personnel and uh, staff, um, it, we're recommending that the permit just be issued by the city, not necessarily by the Chief of Police. And I don't believe that the uh, ad hoc committee had requested it be by the Chief of Police. It was more for the city that was uh, a change that was made that we don't feel was appropriate. The application fee is proposed at $150 per year, which would cover the cost of issuing the permit and several required inspections to ensure the growth site complies with the recommended requirements. And assuming that there were 500 permits issued, then that would be uh, about $75,000 per year generated that could help to partially offset the cost of enforcing the ordinance. So what we're asking for the Planning Commission tonight is to recommend to the City Council that they consider amending the Medical Marijuana Cultivation Ordinance at the next regularly scheduled council meeting. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions from the commissioners? No, I don't have a question. I just want to make a public statement as to I do allow my son to grow on my property. I don't allow him to grow more than six. He's 85% disabled, and I just want to make the public disclosure that I do allow that. I can't be near it, but I do allow it for him. Commissioner <clears throat> Bergen. So how is the city paying for this implementation? Strictly through the ordinance, which you're we currently, um, this last, in this current year, we hired several new code enforcement officers. We received a CBG, a community development block grant uh, that, would, that pays for the salaries for those individuals doing that. So that would uh, be proposed to continue as long as we uh, can continue with that funding to be supplemented by the money that we generate through this permit process. And Lee, correct me if I was incorrect. 
than that. Another question was the, um, you had a five foot setback from the house or more, do you mean? At, at a minimum of five foot setback. Anybody else? If not, then we'll open this up to the public. If you would like to speak on this issue, please come up to the podium, the microphone, identify yourself, and speak into the microphone. Hi, I'm Bob Gorin from Clear Lake Lakeshore Drive. And uh, I just had a question on the third page of the ordinance that describes marijuana may only be cultivated on an occupied lot with approved residential use as defined below. And <clears throat> it's not defined anywhere below. It's, uh, at least in that manner. And then your prohibitions go into the various places, mobile home parks, uh, residential, 100 feet of the lake, that sort of thing, commercial zones, and Residential use and legal residence. You mentioned in the uh, narrative here about legal residence. That's not in here. Those words are not here. It just says residential use. So which one is right? What your narrative was and what's in here. And my question is in terms of residential users, you've got legal uses, you've got non conforming uses, you've got uh, legal non conforming uses. Illegal uses, all residential. Uh, what trumps what? Oh, geez, I shouldn't use that word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what, which one rules? Is it the, the residential use? I mean, for instance, if you're within 100 feet of Clear Lake and you have a residential use that's not defined, uh, what takes precedence? The prohibition for being 100 feet. Lake or from a resident or from a waterway, or is it permitted because you have a residential use within that, within that area? One of them's got to prevail over the other. So, all the other pro prohibitions where it says where it's permitted, but all the, do the pro prohibitions overrule what the residential use might be? Am I getting through? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Staff, you'd like to respond to that? Uh, he made a good point, and we'll look into that. Because it does look like it was defined below, as you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. It's just with the priority. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Anybody else that would like to speak?
I think it's needed to uh, offset the cost. Um, the 10 by 10 should be large enough to grow your six plants, not visible from the street. The way the ordinance is now, you know, you have to have a six foot fence, but the plants can't go over the fence height. So um, hopefully this will get it more under control. I know driving around this fall, you hit certain areas of town and you would smell marijuana and it had to be at least six plants, if not more. So who knows where it was coming from and how it arrived. But hopefully this will go a long way to uh, bring it under control. Um, hopefully if we're still having problems next year, we'll have another ad hoc committee to make more recommendations the year after that. Um, the committee had a number of different people from the community and with different uh, thoughts and different uh, uh, favors and uh, I think we struck a good balance and uh, I will be approve this and send it to the city council and I'm sure there will be more people at the city council meeting I would think I don't know I'm surprised there were more people here tonight so um, I'll stop there thank you thank you anyone else wish to speak Benson. I'm Vince uh, Metzger here in Zurich. I was on the Ad Hoc Committee also, and I'm uh, in favor of this ordinance as we wrote it. And I was actually going to ask, uh, answer a couple questions that I thought I can make more clear. For instance, the idea of using marijuana. Um, when you actually sit and discuss it with a number of people, you realize that smoking marijuana is like drinking whiskey. I mean, how do you regulate it? It's going to be really hard to tell people where and stuff. So it's unenforceable, but you can actually make rules, like not in the park and stuff. I mean, I know, like, I live next to the park. They drink in the park, although it's against the law. So a lot of laws are mainly there to enforce in case there's an, uh, other problems. Like, for instance, if there's violence in the park and they're drinking, you can bust them for drinking. But if somebody's drinking a beer in the park, there's hardly a place where it's going to stop and bust them for drinking a beer especially if it's in a cup that's unrecognizable. So some laws are actually unenforceable, although they're on the books and they need to be on the books for when they're necessary. The other thing was the cost. Um, we wrote into this ordinance that uh, some of the costs will be defrayed by the fees that we charge. But what wasn't mentioned was that in every community where they legalize pot, the cost of enforcing marijuana as an illegal activity is really, really high. And once you decriminalize it, these costs are, tend to disappear. So the savings is going to be in what you don't have to do rather than what you have to do. The enforcement fees, I think, would be adequate. But not in the beginning, because there's a lot of stuff out there that's got to be stopped, which we have. And in the beginning, we're probably going to spend more money than we collect. But in the long run, will save a tremendous amount of money just in enforcement and redefining it as a civil activity rather than a criminal activity. The other one was uh, in regulation on all sides of this issue. Regulation is something to debate because for 80 years it's been illegal. So a lot of different habits took place, for instance, cultivating in your private residence, out of sight, out of mind, illegal, but nobody was willing to kick your door down. Turns out that over the years, a lot of property owners, landlords, came into their newly vacated rental and found that there was tremendous damage caused by indoor cultivation. And when I first started on this issue, I thought the growing pot was like having a house plant, like tomatoes. But in reality, pot requires chemicals. It requires a lot of hydration. Sometimes you have to divert your water. It requires drainage. It requires technical things that aren't appropriate for a residential home where people live and you have to deal with the humidity and all the different byproducts of cultivation. Whereas a houseplant is actually 
good treatment environment, doing a cannabis plant could possibly be not good for your health, and it's certainly not good for your property. I know there's one landlord in this room here, he had spent $15,000 on a house that was improperly used for indoor cultivation, and other landlords I've talked to spent as much as one or two or three thousand on just because uh, a clothing closet was turned into a nursery. So we ban residential cultivation for the simple reason that it's inappropriate. And we encourage the greenhouse in the yard. The other one was, uh, oh, the other one was something that very few people actually are aware of, but when you follow the internet, you realize that worldwide, nationwide, even statewide, cultivation of marijuana, not just for smoking, for the pleasure of smoking, which is why I did it. I don't do it anymore because I have COPD. But I did have an abscess tooth, and I picked up some painkiller that was marijuana-based, and combined with hydrogen peroxide, I saw that abscess tooth. I was amazed. I was a doubt. The other one was I got some oil that uh, I wasn't sleeping so well, and I put a little bit under my tongue at night, and after three days, I had no more sleep problems. So what we're going to be confronted with is that in the future, marijuana is going to be a trillion dollar industry. They're going to introduce massive amounts of products that are not smoke related. They're not even, uh, well, they're medicinal and therapeutical. And when that happens, all the communities that are opening up to this new industry will profit by it, by the registration and the regulation and the fees charged. And I think that uh, our ordinance was an excellent example of what a small community could do. And I know from my point of view, I was trying to write an ordinance that other communities could actually refer to and say, wow, these guys really took it on. And that's kind of what we try to do, and I'm actually pretty proud of it. Even to the point where I'm arguing with a lot of my anarchist friends who don't think anything should be regulated, and that they should be able to make $100,000, $200,000 on the side as was possible when it was illegal. But now that it's illegal, they have to come above board, they have to join the community, they got to pay taxes, they got to register, they have to meet all the requirements of any other business. I have an antique business, I have to buy permits, I have to register with the franchise board, I have to do all kinds of stuff, which irritates me, but it's the business of business. And I think marijuana is going to be a business, of which our community happens to be in the Emerald Empire. <laughs> We're going to see that Northern California will furnish some of the best marijuana in the world and a lot of byproducts. That's my input. And I hope you guys see the vision that we have on our committee. Thank you. Thanks, Mitch. Anyone else wish to speak? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, come, come to the microphone and state your name and where you live. My name is Steph Sam. Live in the city of Puerto I agree with everything that everyone said as far as regulating uh, worlds in the city, in the city of the community where there's some housing development, kids, everybody running around. However, you basically, it feels like what you're doing is throwing a, a net over the entire city. Because there's some people that own more than a housing square footage. They live on acreage, large amounts of acreage. And the current law that's in effect allows them to produce what's the 48 plants or whatever the number of plants is for 48 acres of land. And all of a sudden, you take those outlying people and you say, because we have a problem in the city, we're going to shut you down too. We don't care what you're doing out there. If you're following the law, if you're in compliance with the law, here's a new ordinance. We're not taking that in consideration, and the six plants, regardless. If you've got a wife, a kid, and they have medical marijuana, and the state says that you're allowed to do six plants per, that's dead. It's only six plants per family. The other thing is, most of us, have all, as farmers, have already tried to comply with the state in filling out all the paperwork that we need to make sure that we're in compliance with the state as well as coming in compliance with the city. In this ordinance, none of that is taken into consideration because the state says 
We want you to be in compliance with the Department of Agriculture. We want you to be in compliance with the Department of uh, Transportation. We want you to make sure that you go to DOJ. So in the event that you have nobody on your property that's going to do, do harm to anybody else if you're going to grow marijuana. And we're, in, we're trying, small farmers are trying to comply to all the state laws that are given out. And then we come to the city and the city says, no, because you're in the city limits, boom. I don't care how much property you have, six plants, that's it. I don't care what the situation with your family is, even though California state law says each patient is allowed to grow six plants, and everybody in your family could have a medical marijuana card, we're throwing a blanket over the whole city, done. And I always thought that when you did or you had an ad hoc committee that came back to the city council and said, hey, here's an ordinance we would like to revise. They come back with two or three different suggestions, and not just one that we look at and say, okay, this is the one we're going with, and it's a done deal. There's no other option. And I understand the state, the state gave me the right to do that. And basically, most of the small farmers want to comply with the city and the state. But that is kind of hard to do when the state's going to ask you for X amount of dollars for growth, and the city's going to ask you for X amount of dollars. And basically, we're really not looking at fighting the problem, which is the illegal growth within the city, with those people that want to comply. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Commissioners, any questions that you have? Yes, I, I have a couple of questions. Um, are, are, are there, is, are, is the fee structure similar to other cities that have this kind of order? Well, this is a brand new law. Okay. Um, so I'm not aware, I don't know if this deputy state attorney can help answer that. It's, there are several other cities that our firm has worked on ordinances that allow cultivation that charge a fee and you're allowed to to recoup the administrative costs of administering a program. A is, is, is the fee similar to this? I haven't seen numbers. I just usually they're set by the finance department and based on a calculation of what the staff time would be to issue the permit and do the inspections. Is, is that is that why, why we came up with $150? Yeah, we, we looked at uh, what would be the staff time to go out and look at, uh, to do three inspections and to handle the paperwork in-house? Okay, I have a question to uh, Mr. Chellian. Yeah, is this ordinance now better enforceable? I believe it would be, absolutely. It better enforceable than what we've had in the past. Is it the same with our code enforcement? Yes. Commissioner Perkins? Yeah, I wanted to know about uh, this gentleman's uh, request on more like 50 or 60 plants outside this, well, in the city limits, but on a larger parcels. Is that within the state, or is that just clearly state? state well, our, our existing ordinance, if you have 40 acres or more under the existing ordinance, you could have 48 plants. And we had it was kind of a sliding scale. So if you had less than a half acre, you could have up to six plants. And then I think it was 12, 18, 24, something like that. But now with the new states, and we're following the state's recommendation. Well, um, this was the recommendation of the ad hoc committee to limit this it to six. So this is right. just clear. Correct. If I'm not mistaken, it eliminates commercial roads within the city. Now, one of the things the our committee wanted to accomplish was to eliminate commercial growers and let people have their pot, their plants, six plants in their home, and, and have that available to them. No commercial. Right. Anybody else? Uh, if I remember by the, <clears throat> by the current ordinance, according to the amount of property that I own inside the city limits, I would be able to grow 54 plants. I think it was limited to 48. Well, no, that's why I have two separate parcels. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, one is over five acres, and one's just over an acre. And um, I only allow ever to have six plants grown by my son, because he can get two pounds worth of product, and that more than lasts him the year. And he is 85% disabled. 
full on the replacement, bad knees, motorcycle accident, died four times on the way to the hospital. So, you know, he he definitely knows how to grow, and it, it, it's an art. It's an art form, and he never grows just one specific strain. He grows the different ones for his medical needs, you know, as to help him sleep, help him get up, help him function, and that type of stuff. So the six plants to me is absolutely perfect, and registering is absolutely perfect. But in bringing in the uh, register, your recommendation, is that a part of a HEPA violation? I don't know. That was one thing that was touched before about people having to present their recommendations. I have no problem with him presenting it. Well, if you're if they're going to present it to the city for the purpose of obtaining a permit, I don't think that would violate any any HIPAA provision. Um, we would be able, under the California Public Records Act, to withhold that information if any of the public want a, a copy of it. And there's also provisions in the new state law that mirror that to say that, that there would be a requirement to disclose medical information that was obtained. In reading really the two ABs and the SB, I didn't see anything on that. So I was just wondering. There was a provision, but there's also the, the California Public Records Act, as it is, we, we would have a basis to withhold that because it's personal medical information. So okay. I, um, I, obviously, if you obtain a permit, then it's that it, it, it discloses that you have a medical recommendation, but um, as far as the particulars of the recommendation, definitely the city could withhold that information from a public records request. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I didn't close the public hearing while ago, so if anyone else has anything else they want to speak to come, come yeah, to the podium. I have one more question. Is it okay to do both twice? You want to wait? I have one more question. Oh, please come up to the microphone. Excuse me. During our committee meetings, we had two really strong issues that we debated. And one was the uh, growing inside your home. We settled that uh, by logic, logistics. It just wasn't healthy. And there was some overwhelming evidence that uh, you can't really grow in a contained residential area. The other one was commercial grows. And I was told that we only had one property in Clear Lake that was 40 acres. And we had a lot of 20 acres, but we didn't really have any ranches large enough for agricultural type of grows. So we basically banned it. And now I find out there's a gentleman here that's got 57 acres. And we probably do have a couple of commercial plots that could be used as a commercial grow. And perhaps we could put into this new ordinance a special, uh, um, maybe you can apply for a special permit or something so that we could have one, a, a few commercial grows. Now, I know we are going, we're expecting that the dispensaries are going to organize some people and put together some interior roads, you know, they're going to put together certain buildings and if they come up the code and everything, people will be able to organize and collectively grow according to the dispensary ordinance, which is not what we're talking about. But there are a few people that have commercial roads that are operating under state standards and all of a sudden they're in city jurisdiction. That's what this gentleman brought up, which I didn't think we'd have that problem. So I just presented to you, my only suggestion is that we might have a, an appeal built into the ordinance for certain properties that might be appropriate for commercial grows on special application. Just a suggestion. I just thought I'd bring it up. Thank you. Okay. Since you gave a suggestion, Again, I'll, yes. I'll give a suggestion. My suggestion is stay with the six plants. Um, I still, I'm still not aware of a parcel within the city limits that has a residence that is 40 acres or more. Uh, this gentleman says he's got a piece by Morax. I don't know if it's in the city or in the county, but we've got to get a handle on the crime, on the illegal grows, on the hundred plant grows. And if we don't do that, I mean, maybe we can revisit 
if we get control, maybe we can revisit that issue. But at this time, I think it's important and critical that we get a handle, get this town under control. I had another thought about it. If you can't smoke a cigarette, you shouldn't be able to smoke a marijuana, whatever the reaper or whatever they call them, in the same place. I mean, uh, if you can't smoke in the park a cigarette, you shouldn't be able to smoke marijuana. Um, I got some complaints from, I seem to get a lot of complaints from people, you know, about illegal grows and they want me to return them in. The parade we just had, a number of people came to me and said they're not going to attend next year because there were so many people smoking marijuana in front of the kids at the park, et cetera, et cetera. They don't want to deal with that anymore. So, I know we don't have anything about not smoking where you can't smoke cigarettes, but you know we can revisit things and refine this ordinance as we go along, and that could include maybe commercial grows if we determine that maybe the city wants to go there, and there are parcels that might qualify. Again, my problem isn't medical marijuana. My problem is where it's grown, and I don't think it should be grown in the city limits, period. But I'll put up with six plants. So. His suggestion was maybe we should go to commercial. My suggestion is leave it alone, leave it at six. It's still got to go to the city council. And uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Um, my name is Stoneman Gorey. I live on Lake Shore Drive. Um, I've been here all my life. Um, my husband and I did for 13 years, we published the visitor guide. So just to give you an idea. I'm sold real estate, working in schools now. Um, I sat here at the planning commission when we came up with the very first zoning ordinance and we did our general plan. The things I'm getting at is that through property use, land use, you can abate issues. How do you um, abate the stink of a skunk? How do you tell a tourist to come to the Clear Lake when the smell is so bad? that the first thing they do is check out. Um, you can abate property by saying so many horses on a piece of property, so many goats, so many chickens. That's what you're doing. Whether it's commercial or not, you're saying so many plants because you are abating an issue and the issue is the stink and the cultivation and everything that goes along with the growth. And so that's how you have to look at it. It's it's. You know, I, if I agree with Dave Hughes, I would say zero. But at least six plants, you can abate it to the point where it possibly is not a nuisance to the neighbor or the nose or your tourist or a business. Try in October to sit at Cactus Grill and have a meal without being nauseous. Or my whole thing is I had migraines for the two and a half months that my neighbor had not six plants, but then moved them inside. So I, I, you know, you come up with good ordinance, not the way I would do it, but at least you can abate it with the six, the smell. If you allow a commercial grow that is going to have that many plants, the odor is going to be taking over for miles, not just within the, the confines of that man's property or woman's, whoever owns it. It is going to spread because you can't keep the smell within, you know, the airwaves. So please, please do not consider allowing commercial grows in the city of Clear Lake. Thank you. No one else. I close the public hearing. Any questions from the commissioners? Any comments? Uh, I want to thank the uh, our committee. I think uh, it looks like all sides of this issue have been represented in there. But an ordinance that uh, is workable. Thank you. Uh, I only have a couple of comments. Uh, inside the city of Clear Lake, there are some very large uh, residential parcels, and that would be out in my neck of the woods, which is Borax Lake. Tony and Janet King had 127 acres, I think, that got subdivided. Uh, might have gone into two parcels, so the gentleman might be correct in owning 40 acres inside the city limits. My 10 acres is inside the city limits. You step over my back fence and you're in the county. So I'm thinking that 
if you're out that far and there are no other residences, if you're doing it in cooperation with a collective or a cooperative, maybe you could get um, a permit to do more. You know, like if I were going to help Liz Bird grow, and because I've got the 10 acres and I'm 300 feet away from the closest neighbor, would there be a way to get a permit to do that, or is that just not not doable? Not under the what's proposed. The only comment that I have on this is we've been fighting this now since 1996. It's a long time. And uh, there's been a lot of proposals come before the, the city council. There's been proposals come before the planning commission. Uh, there's been ordinances adopted. Uh, but of all of the uh, times that we've had this, to me, this seems like the most logical uh, and best prepared ordinance that, uh, that we've had presented to us. And I think that uh, the fact that we've moved by no grow in the city of Clear Lake is uh, no commercial grows is a very important part of keeping our developing our city into the pristine city that it has the potential to be. If we don't uh, overrun it with uh, crime, and Lieutenant Sully can't uh, can't solve it all. He would like to, and I know he tries. But so do we have a motion from the commission? I move that uh, we recommend to the city council that they consider amending the medical bond cultivation ordinance at the next scheduled meeting. It's ordinance number 175 dash. If I could just interrupt that for a second. Um, if you could also um, direct us to uh, correct the residential use issue that was brought forward. Correct and correct the residential uh, use. And to amend uh, it to be a city issued permit rather than a uh, chief of police permit. And that it is a city issued permit, not and, a, and a, by the chief of police. And if you want us to include the recommendation. A required a recommendation um, from a physician be required. That was that was that part in red that I oh, put on the. Okay. We'll include that. Okay. I'd like to second as stated. With the addition. <coughs> okay. Give me a roll call vote. Commissioner Sutton. I approve it. Commissioner Perkins? Approved. Commissioner Hutchinson? Aye. Vice Chair? Close <laughs> enough. <laughs> Commissioner Antis? Aye. I approve. And Chair Whip? Approved. Unanimous. Uh, I'd really like to thank the ad hoc committee. They spent a lot of time and effort on this. Uh, some of you I know have spent many, many days, not just hours, trying to come up with a workable solution that's fair to, uh, to everyone. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, I appreciate all. I appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, and uh, I presume that most of you will be at the city council meeting when it comes up for approval. So I'll probably see you there then. The very promised is a trip to Greece. Do we have a report from Chef? A report from Sam. Let's see. Been working on this for quite a bit. <laughs> I'm sure you have. Uh, so uh, I think that's enough for now. Okay. Do the commissioners have anything? Meetings adjourned.